Hello students, good afternoon. This is Professor Henderson and this is part two of the elimination chapter. So let's talk a little bit about the elimination patterns. So as a nurse, it's important to, uh, when you're doing an assessment to ask your patient um, if, the, if they have irregular bowel patterns every day, the frequency of their bowel patterns and um, the times of the day, they have one every day, they have one every three days, um, the color of the stool, the consistency of the stool, so on and so forth. Also in your assessment, it's important to inquire from your patient if they have any family history of um, stomach cancer, so on and so forth. Um, as I said, the characteristics of the stool, um, the color, the consistency, the formness of the stool, and also medications. Um, ask your patient if they take opiates, because opiates can cause also con constipation. Also, iron pills. Um, if they take iron, the stool will be um, slightly um, dark color, and that's normal. They take any type of analgesics. Um, provide emotional support for your patient because, you know, sometimes they go through a lot of stress. And as a nurse, a big part of your job is to provide emotional support. Um, ask your patient about their exercise patterns. Do they exercise? As we know, exercise also helps to stimulate peristalsis. Um, appetite. Ask them if they have any changes in their appetite and um, encourage and educate them to um, eat frequent small meals. Um, ask them about their diet history. Um, if they're taking, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. Um, their fluid intake, they should have eight glasses of water every day. Um, that's contraindicated if the patient is on dialysis or CHF patients. It's country indicated to have um, eight glasses of water per day. So these are these are critical questions that you have to assess with your patients. Um, how? Let's move on to the physical assessment. Also, um, assess the abdomen for um, it, the contour of the abdomen and the symmetry of the abdomen. Um, there should be no uh, peristalsis wave, should not be noted when you're assessing the abdomen. The mouth, assess the mouth for uh, poor fitting dentures or missing teeth. Um, poor fitting dentures or missing feet, teeth can have also affect the patient's ability to swallow. Inspect the rectum, inspect the rectum the rectum and the anus for any lesions, any discoloration, any type of inflammation, and hemorrhoids. Um, maybe the doctor may order a fecal or cold blood, and that test measures the amount of blood in the feces. It's a test, it's a test that is used, a laboratory test that is used to diagnose colon cancer. Um, diagnostic, patient may need a colonoscopy um, after age 50. They might need an endoscopy. They may need a KUB. So you may have to um, prepare them. They might have to be NPO post midnight. You might have to um, asset, uh, administer um, tap water enema and so on and so forth. So bowel preparation. Um, it's also important when you're assessing, when you're auscultating the abdomen, um, Bowel sounds occur every five to 15, min 15 seconds. Um, absent or hypoactive sound in the bowel may indicate um, ileus, and that is very serious. And this sometimes is um, occur post-surgery. Um, bowel sounds may return after 24 to 48 hours after surgery due to the anesthetic agents that they use. We have a case study here, so um, you can read the case study. 
Mr. Gattaris had his last bowel movement. He had his last bowel movement two days ago. The stool was brown and hard. I took laxative last night and I think I need an enema. So it's important that you do a full um, abdominal assessment before you administer any type of laxative. And the term Mr. Gattaris medication history shows that Mr. Gattaris frequently resorts to taking laxatives. So you can educate your patients in terms of the side effects of lax laxative. Um, Mr. Gattaris dietary habits, high intake of corn, tortilla cheese, and low intake of fruits. So you can educate your patient about fresh fruits and vegetables, hypoactive bowel songs in all four quadrants. Abdomen is not is soft but slightly distended. So what will be your interventions after you do the abdominal assessments? These are some nursing diagnoses linking the chapter. We know that nursing diagnosis, we have to use NANDA approved nursing diagnosis. So we talked about goals and we have been talking about goals that their long-term goals, their short-term goals and their intermediate goals. So it's important that your goals are measurable, attainable, and you use the acronym of SMART, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and it also is time frame. Um, we talked about um, setting priorities for your patient that um, patients with the most acute condition will be um, triage first. We also talked about teamwork and collaboration, how important it is as a registered nurse to work with um, other member, members of the healthcare team in order to enhance um, the patient um, outcomes. We have a case study here. You could read this when you get time. Um, implementation of health promotion. So we know um, African Americans have a higher incident of colorectal cancer, and it is the third most common cause of cancer. And we also know that early detection and screening can um, <clears throat> can really minimize the um, the complications of colon cancer. So educate your patients about early screening and detection. Uh, maintaining your patient privacy, it's important when you're doing a um, rectal examination, you um, pull the curtain, you close the door, you maintain their privacy. When you're positioning a patient on a bedpan, we have a fractured pan, we have a regular bedpan that um, when you're placing them on a bed plan, the head should be flat, but when they are on the bed plan, it should be raised to um, 30 to 45 degree. And that's an image of um, the proper anatomical position when you're placing a patient on a bed pan. Make sure you assess the, um, the color of the stool and the consistency if there's any odor, so on and so forth. Positioning a patient on a bedpan, make sure you put a, um, make sure you apply a barrier on the bed, make sure you uh, follow um, standard precautions. A fractured bedpan is used for a patient with hip injuries and who is unable to um, raise their hip. We have a case study here. When you get a chance, you can read the case study. Um, we talked a little bit about um, laxative, catheters are strong, and they're more rapid effects in the intestine than laxative. Um, suppositories may act more quickly than oral medications. Also, antidiuretic. Antidiarrheal agents such as loperidomide is used for diarrhea. We talked a little bit about opiates used with caution patients with um, using opiates. They are at increased risk for um, opiates induced constipation. 
um, there are different types of enema. There is tap water enema. Tap water enema, there's normal saline. There's hypertonic solution. So a tap water enema is a hypotonic um, enema. It exerts osmotic pressure and it's in, it infuses water to stimulate the bowel movements. Um, normal saline enema is safest as a solution with the same osmotic concentration as the fluid in the intestine. And the normal saline enema is um, used for to uh, stimulate peristalsis. Um, there's soap water enema. Soap side enema adds soap to the water to create the intest to um to create and, and stimulate peristalsis. Um, we have oil oil retention retention enema helps to lubricate the feces in the rectum and colon and it becomes as it allows it to become softer for um and it helps to facilitate evacuation of the stool um we know k -exalate is used to treat um high elevated potassium hyperkalemia Monit you have to monitor your patient for any type of dysrhythmias place a patient on a cardiac monitor also, um, we know certain antibiotics such as neomycin is used to reduce bacteria in the colon. Um, carminatives is used also to um, relieve from gas and distension and enhance the ability to pass gas. So um, administering an enema for a patient is it's important to know what anatomical position you're going to place your, place your patient in. It's not a sterile technique. It's an aseptic technique. So when you're placing a patient for an enema, you can place them in a sims position or a right or left lateral position. You insert the tip, the cath the tip of the enema. Um, and you insert it into the rectum. Make sure you have a bedpan there. Um, when you're doing a digital removal of stool, it's manually um, removing hard stool from the rectum. And you have to be very careful with that because that can also stimulate the vagus nerve, thereby reducing the heart rate and the patient can become um, bradycardic so um that also you know a lot of a lot of facilities do not do that procedure they allow the physician to do it because of um, stimulating the vagus nerve um, in the acute setting sometimes i'm inserting a maintain an nasogastric tube and the purpose of a nasogastric tube is to um decompress the stomach and use it um, post-surgery it's not a sterile technique it's a aseptic technique there are different um, fringes of um, nasogastric tubes um, what is your nursing consideration with a patient with a nasogastric tube it's important that um Post insertion of the NG tube that it's confirmed with an X ray. Also, um, before you start any feedings or anything, make sure you have to check um, placement and patency. And the way to do that by injecting 15 to 30 ml of air and they um, listen with a stethoscope that the, for a gurgling sound that into, um, ensures that the the NG tube is in place. Sometimes they can do aspirate of the um, of the content, and they can also check the pH of the content. Also, um, so it's important that you follow the uh, proper techniques when you're starting the feeding, checking the placement and the patency, post insertion of the NG tube. Please ensure that you get an order, obtain an order, a physician order.